thank you for joining us. I'm Karen Bradley. I'm part of the strategy unit team um, and um, I'm just doing the intro and then I'm going to hand over to my colleague Zahira, um, who's going to um, uh, take you through this this briefing. Um, uh, we well, we, we're, we're five months into this journey of actually developing this long COVID peer review service. And we'd be nowhere if we didn't have people like yourselves, um, whose enthusiasm to have a go at this, give this a whirl, is really important to us. So massive thank you. And also, along this journey, we've been working collaboratively with what we've called the Decision Group, who I know Trish has been part of that, um, who have been an absolutely critical part of our learning. So we aren't, well, myself and Zahira, we are, and, and my colleague Alison, we're not clinicians. Um, and we don't deliver services in the way that you deliver services. So we can go away and look at the research and the evidence and uh, and do all that kind of thinking work. But what we can't do is actually make it real and make it work. And without those people involvement, we'd have we, we'd be uh, well, we just wouldn't have been able to do this. So we're, this is really exciting for us because this is at that crunch point where five five months of work is about to be um, tried out. OK, and um, and and we I mean, Zoom here is going to take you through through the process, but I just wondered if I could put the slides up. So here it is. Shall I, shall I put the slides up or, or do you want to do that? Oh, thank you, Zahira. So if you if you take us to ooh, seeing myself twice, there is too much. Could you go on to the next um, slide? Aha, belt and braces. So I very purposely chose this slide today um, to share with you um, that we recognise there is going to, this will appear very, we've thrown everything at it in a way, it's gone a belt and braces because uh, we're right at the very first point of now piloting. And so um, part of your job is going to be to help tell us whether we've gone over the top too much, whether we need to whether we need to um, change things, uh, remove something, add something. Um, we're going. This is going to be a real learning time for us, and we will. I just want to assure you that we will be part of your journey with you. We'll be with you on the day. Uh, we'll be seeing how you're getting on with things. Um, and we'll be asking you afterwards in a focus group to give us feedback. So I just want you to be really aware that, that this is belt and braces, because if you just go on to the next slide for me. Thank you. Um, these are the principles that we all agreed. We started this very collaboratively. You, see, you can see if you just press on one, um, uh, Zahira. Um, you know, stakeholder involvement and drawing on available evidence were, you know, two of the key principles for us starting off in this process. Um, and so, so yes, here we are today. You're part of that process. Um, it's incredibly important that we get your feedback. But if we just, if you just click on once, maybe a second time. Aha, lovely, lovely. My animations work this morning. Um, it's been quite um, a challenging project because um, we've used the evidence base. We've used London's methodology. Um, we've um, we've created stakeholder involvement yourselves and the decision making group. Um, but some of our other principles we set out to do have been quite challenging for her. So it, it has to be straightforward. The whole idea about this is that you're able to use use it without much intervention. That was a really important part of this process. So you will see there are a lot of pro formas and templates. OK, um, um, so straightforward does not mean lack of documents. Yep, <laughs> straightforward means that you, you're able to get on and, and do something. Um, the approach should be broadly consistent so so that you're all doing a similar thing, uh, but whilst allowing for variation, because all of your services are so different. And that's been um, and so again, there'll be lots of options that you'll be um, um, given the choice to do as you go through this so that you can tailor it to you. OK. Um, we should use inclusive and an equitable approach irrespective of background. Again, that creates choices that you will make. But the other, you know, one of the most important things, knowing just how pressured you all are and the NHS is at the moment, 
minimising the ask on the service, the burden on the service has been really important to us. So, so, um, so kind of lessening the load of your decision making is part of that process. But because we've got lots of variation and difference, we've had to provide um, uh, choices. So, so, and I just say all of this because as you go through, you might be slightly, um, it's quite a big um, document. There, there are large documents with lots of elements in it, but hopefully you will become aware that, oh, I do that bit, I don't need to do that bit. Because the, the last one, if you just go on uh, to that last one for me, um, what we've constantly been doing is a measured approach to, um, if you're actually going to get something that's worth learning out of this, you've got to put effort in. OK, that's a really important aspect of this, um, this process, because we set out to be able to create a benchmarking or be able to review outcomes and share learning with each other. You don't get that without putting the effort in at the beginning. So so there's a balancing there's a balancing act that that we're we're, we're, we're going through here because ultimately that's what you want to get to to get the learning to get that clinical shared learning with each other um, out of this so so belt and braces um, come into this with an open mind open heart but then get ready to give us feedback because if if there's bits that don't we, we, we're going to want to know what works for you really well and what doesn't work for you any questions before we go on and 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 Zahira does a proper proper intro onto peer review, et cetera, et cetera. Please use the chat if there's anything that you're worried about or you want us to stop or pause, put your physical hand up if physical hand helps or use the um, hand up button. Uh, we're, we're quite happy just to talk, but we're also happy to chat as well. So um, please feel free to interrupt us as we go through. I'm going to hand over to you now, Zahira. OK, <laughs> thank you so much, Karen, for that introduction. Um, so I'm Zahira Taladia. I've been um, project managing this um, this program. Um, so I've worked with different decision making. You know, I've kind of set up the decision making group where we've kind of tested some of this um, process with different clinical and service leads along the way. Um, so we've had like a real collaborative approach to um, developing this process. So um, slightly nervous, but also really excited about kind of sharing this process with you um, and just getting some feedback on how you think um, this kind of will apply to your service. So in terms of the long COVID peer review process, this is the summary. So this is a summary slide that you'll probably keep going back to in terms of what does the peer review process look like. So you've got the preparation for a peer review visit um, and we'll go into each of these um, sections in more detail later. Then you've got the peer review visit, you've got the post peer review visit and then you've got a regional summary and then a learning event. So we'll go into each of these um, sections in more detail throughout this presentation. But I thought I'd just allow you to kind of just cast your eyes on that just so that you've got um, an overview of what the process entails. So as you know, um, NHS England Midlands have approached us, the strategy to kind of des design this peer review programme for long COVID services. Um, so we've developed this approach that will be used when undertaking a peer review. Um, we've also developed um, a guidance document which will be at hand for all of you to use where we kind of go into a little bit more detail in terms of what this um, presentation um, describes um, and we'll be testing the process with the three pilot peer review teams that have um, volunteered to, um, to test the process and um, throughout this um, Throughout the pilot stages, we'll be learn. We'll be reflecting the learning um, into the process. So once pilot one undertakes a peer review, we'll get feedback from the review team, and then kind of 
um, feed that feedback into the process again before pilot two undertakes their peer review and we'll do that for each of the three pilot sites just so that you know it's um, it's continuously improving and it's an iterative process. So in terms of a definition definition of peer review, you know, it's an accepted tool within the NHS. It's there to kind of explore variation, um, facilitate continuous improvement and develop services. You know, it's a real learning opportunity, allows um, different needs and clinical clinical leads to exchange knowledge and and the experiences between healthcare professionals. The Health Foundation has um, defined peer review as a professional assessment against standards of the organization of healthcare processes and quality of work with the objective of facilitating its improvement. So you can see there's a real emphasis there on improvement. In the Midlands, um, you know, we, we're going to be focusing on the development of long COVID services, quality improvement, reducing unwarranted variation where possible, because we know all the services are quite different and the delivery models are quite different, learning and innovation. So this is our, so as Karen mentioned, we've been developing this process over um, a few months now. So, you know, um, it's not something that we've kind of just written without any kind of background information or any evidence, etc. It's all evidence-based and kind of we've used experiential learning and expert advice in developing this process. So we've um, Alison completed an evidence review. We reviewed the London model. We've already kind of developed this um, process. Um, so we didn't kind of want to reinvent the wheel. So um, we've kind of taken learning from the London model um, where we can apply it to the, to the Midlands. And obviously we've kind of recognised that the, uh, the Midlands region is quite different to London, so we've kind of factored that into the process as well. We did a theory, um, Alison also um, completed like a theory of change session with the Lung London COVID program team. So we kind of, um, in that session, we looked at outcomes and how we might want, you know, the outcomes that we wanted to achieve as part of this peer review um, service and the activities and things that we might need to um, undertake to ensure that we achieve those outcomes. Then we had two stakeholder engagement events across the 11 ICS long, long, long COVID services. And that's where we kind of got a lot of your involvement. And some of you might have attended that session. And that's where you kind of volunteered to be part of this pilot. Um, we drafted guidance documents and the process. We had, we had three decision making sessions where we took part of the guidance that we've developed and tested it with clinical and service leads. Um, and then we finalised the process and guidance um, at the end of March, beginning of April. And then we've matched services using a daisy chain model. And I'll go into what the daisy chain model means later. Um, and obviously we've kind of, we're now providing a briefing to the pilot teams. Um, and then you'll attend training delivered by Tim. I think one's scheduled in for this week and then we've got bespoke training for the others. Um, and then we'll organise focus groups, as mentioned before, to kind of get feedback on the process and then just kind of modify the process as we go along. Um, and then we'll iterate, you know, the guidance documents and, um, and the programme overall. So that's the peer review programme timeline. <laughs> Um, so how has the peer review process been developed? As I mentioned, we've kind of used documents from the NHS England London model. We've looked at desktop evidence. We got advice from the Midland stakeholder group and that included clinical and non-clinical staff. And then we've got also expert advisors and peer review programmes who have kind of asked for advice on different parts of the process and we've tested it with them as well. So these are the aims and objectives of a peer review. Um, so we've got improving patient and care experience. Obviously, that's the heart of any kind of service that um, we provide within the NHS. Um, you know, we're hoping to improve quality and effectiveness of care, um, reducing exacerbation of inequalities, um, creating consistency within the process, 
but obviously also allowing for local variation because I am aware that there's different service models and services operate quite differently, but having more of a consistent approach where possible. Um, enhancing communication, learning and sharing of good practice. So there's lots of long COVID clinics around the Midlands, so it will provide the opportunity for you to share good practice and and um, and learning. Um, and then increasing awareness of opportunities for improvement. So where is it that you can improve as a service, et cetera? And, um, and then also improving consistency of data collection. So I know some services, you know, services are collecting different data. So it'll probably, it will through kind of filling in like, like the self-assessment form and other kind of forms, you'll be able to ascertain which data collection you know, is important and, you know, the kind of knowledge um, on data services um, that has been gathered within the Midlands. Um, and then also ident identifying evaluation, analysis and research needs um, across the lo local services in the Midlands. So we've gone through this and Karen's already gone through this in terms of the principles of peer, of peer review. So these are the principles that we've kind of taken into account whilst developing the process. Um, now, in terms of the pilot, has anybody got any questions up to now? No? OK, brilliant. OK, now we're going into the actual pilot site now. So as I mentioned before, we've we've used the daily, daily chain model um, and that's where we've matched services um, um, according to multidisciplinary teams. So um, review teams you'll see include key roles across different long COVID providers rather than from one provider. Um, and teams were formed based on availability, travel and location. So we wanted it to be as easy as possible um, because we recognise that actually we didn't want to overburden one service. So if we kind of had like, I don't know, um, Lincolnshire reviewing Leicester, it wouldn't be, you know, possible to have five members, um, you know, away from the service for one day or maybe a few days if it's a virtual serve, a virtual um, peer review. And so what we've done is we've mixed up teams. So we've, you'll see that you'll be working with different regions, except different, um, yeah, regions, etc. So Team A will review Team B. Team B will then review Team C and Team C will then review Team D. OK, so it's been quite a logistical challenge and I think Sharon's been back and forth with lots of emails trying to get availability and, and things like that. But hopefully in the long run, it will be, you know, it will maximise learning, allow you to kind of share best practice. So you'll see there's, the teams are multidisciplinary so as well as kind of gaining learning whilst you're reviewing the service between the reviewers themselves they'll be also um, be able to kind of share learning amongst themselves you'll be able to create networks and work with different healthcare professionals from different um, services and you'll be able to hopefully improve communication and um, a multidisciplinary engagement will be um, achieved so in terms of the pilot so this is pilot one so this is all based on your availability that you've um, that you gave to Karen uh, to, to to Sharon. Um, so we've scheduled pilot one from the 15th of May to the 19th of May. Within pilot one, we'll have Lincolnshire and Leicester, who will be the review team. They will be reviewing Staffordshire and Stoke, so they're known as the host team. So the service being reviewed. OK, and you will see that within the review team, you've got different um, roles. OK, so we've got the clinical. You've got a review lead. You've got a review team facilitator and then you've got two additional reviewers to kind of support the process as well. And we've also got a patient rep as part of this process. Um, so please do kind of engage with her as well. I don't think she's been able to. I think she's coming slightly late to the meeting because she's got an appointment, but um, she is also available as part of the review team. Um, and then we've got the host team. Um, oh, Sarah's here. So this is our patient right there. Hello, Sarah. Hi. 
apologies for being late. No worries at all. I just mentioned your name and then that's when you you join the meeting. Um, and then we've got Staffordshire and Stoke who will be the host team. Right, so we've got um, a host team lead who will kind of and the host team facilitator as part of that, who will just organise all the logistical arrangements um, for the review team to undertake the peer review. Um, so that between the 15th of May, we scheduled, scheduled it for a week. So it will really depend on whether we've given a week because typically um, peer reviews kind of take place on one day. But we have also recognised the different service models, etc. And we realised that actually services, some services run virtually and maybe a face to face, although it's the preferred option, might not be possible. So that's why we've scheduled in a week for you to kind of complete all the, the tasks that we'll go through later. Any questions on pilot one? We'll go into pilot two now. Oh God. Okay, pilot two, um, we've scheduled it for the 15th, 5th of June to the 9th of June. Within pilot two, we've got Staffordshire and Stoke and Lincolnshire, part of the review team. Um, they will be reviewing Leicester, who will be the host team. OK, so we've got all the different, again, we've got the similar roles. Um, we have a review lead, review facilitator, and then two additional clinical reviewers. And then we've got Sarah as our patient rep as part of the review team. Um, and then the host team again, we've got a host team lead and a facilitator coordinator to kind of just organise the visit, etc. cetera. Um, Pilot three, we've got from the 26th of June to the 30th of June. Um, and we've got the same arrangement. So we've got less than Staffordshire as part of the review team. And we've got Lincolnshire as the host team the service that will be reviewed. OK, now in terms of we'll kind of mention all the key roles as part of the peer review um, process. So I mentioned, um, so we've got the program manager, that's myself. So I'm the one that's been kind of, ha you know, I provide a strategic oversight of the peer review program, kind of develop the process, match services, et cetera. So you don't need to worry about that part. We've got our patient rep, Sarah. Um, so she'll be, she'll ensure that the patient voice is central to the peer review process. So she's helped us develop some of the guidance documents and, you know, the templates and the interview guides and things like that. So she's been really useful as part of developing the process. But in terms of um, during the peer review, please kind of use her for any kind of um, patient interviews that um, you intend to undertake. Um, and she'll um, present the experience of all patients rather than her own individual experiences um, and she'll help you know if it's like her face to face then she'll walk the patient journey um, and she'll just kind of review the different aspects of the service including the environment to see whether it's suitable for a patient etc review like things like accessibility communication and the flow of the service and then in terms of responsibilities post peer review she'll share all her notes and all the um, notes taken from say the interviews that she's undertaken and she'll share that with the review team facilitator so the one that's kind of coordinating all this all the different aspects of the peer review then you've got the clinical review team so those are the ind these individuals will be undertaking the review okay um so they will review the self-assessment form submitted by host services so as part of this, and we'll go through what a self-assessment form is later, but as part of this peer review, um, host services, so the service that's been reviewed will be asked to complete a self-assessment form. So the review team will kind of review that before the peer review actually takes place. They'll attend peer review training, which has already been organised and will be um, delivered by Tim. Um, and then obviously responsibilities during the peer review, we've gone through this, you know, they'll kind of review any evidence, observe any relevant meetings, conduct interviews with a range of stakeholders, and that will be patients as well as service teams 
and then take notes as part whilst they're undertaking some of those tasks. Um, and then after the post, after the peer review, they'll at attend and contribute to a debrief. So we 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 recommend that um, you know the review team kind of as you know different individuals are doing different tasks. Um, once everybody's kind of completed that, it would be quite nice to have a debrief um, after, um, and then you kind of submit any notes to the review team facilitator and um, any kind of reflections that you've had during the process. And don't worry, we've got templates for everything, so you'll find all of that um, um, on NHS Futures where we're um, uploading um, all the guidance and templates. Then you've got the review team facilitator, so I keep mentioning this role, so they will coordinate key tasks on behalf of the review team. OK, um, so, you know, host teams will be expected to do a self-assessment form, so they'll just make sure that that's been submitted and also they'll arrange a call with um, the service lead from the host team to kind of just um, Talk through the planning of the peer review, um, coordinate roles and kind of just finalise the agenda and all those kind of things. Um, during the peer review, they'll kind of attend meetings um, to kind of at the beginning to discuss the plan for the day um, and just kind of provide introductions and that kind of thing. They can also be part of all the other tasks. So if you're struggling with time, um, you know, they can undertake some of the interviews and things like that. Post peer review, they'll be collecting all the different notes and reflections from the peer review team um, um, and then kind of follow up on any outstanding requests. So if you've got a face to face, um, you've decided to do like a face to face peer review and then there's certain aspects that you haven't been able to undertake during that visit. For example, there was some, you know, um, maybe service members who weren't able to be part of an interview, etc. They will be the one to kind of organise the follow up after that. Um, and then they will also write and finalise a peer review report. And Tim will go through this during his training in terms of what's expected as part of that that report and, and and things like that. So as all they review all the team members as part of the peer review team, they kind of undertake all those tasks, they submit all their notes, then the review team facilitator will write the, the final report. That report will then be shared with the review team to just make sure everybody's happy with it. And also they will send it to the host team to just check for factual accuracy and things like that. Um, we've also include, uh, included um, a review lead, like a clinical lead, as part of the review team. Um, that person is really to kind of support the peer review facilitator in all of this. So, um, you know, they will review the self-assessment form, they'll chair the meeting. So if it's like a face-to-face, -face, they'll chair the meeting at the beginning of the visit, or if it's a virtual, you know, the, the, the first meeting, they might want to, um, to chair that meeting and you know they'll lead the debrief so i said after the peer review um after the peer review um they will kind of lead the debrief with the host team to kind of just say you know these are the these are the key findings and this is this is our experience of the service um and they will provide that verbal feedback um also in terms of post peer review they'll be um one of their responsibilities will be to escalate any kind of immediate patient risks that's been identified. This is very uncommon anyway, so nothing to worry about. Um, and they will just support the review team facilitator with writing the report. And then we've got lastly the host team lead. So that's all. So I've mentioned all the kind of um, roles for the review team. Now the host team lead will be the one who will be organising the review of their service. OK, so I mentioned the self-assessment form. Um, so before the actual peer review visit takes place, um, they'll, um, the host team will be expected to submit a self-assessment form and to, um, and to send it to the review team facilitator. So they will be in charge of that. Um, during the peer review, it's really kind of to kind of just make the the peer review as easy as possible for the review team. So they might want to give a presentation on the service, you know, organize logistics, like booking rooms and, and that kind of thing. If it's a if it's a 
face to face visit. Um, just ensure like all the relevant evidence is available and um, they've made arrangements for the review team to speak to um, any relevant stakeholders, but that might be people part of the service as well as patients. After the peer review, um, they'll attend the feedback session organised by the review team facilitator. OK, so um, after the peer review, the review team will give some verbal feedback, so they should be attending that meeting. So there's lots of um, roles there. Um, hopefully it's all quite clear. Has any, but I'm just going to stop there because I understand, you know, there's lots of information to take in there and hopefully it'll make these slides will be made available to you. But I wanted to just stop there and ask whether there's any questions or anything that doesn't really make sense at the moment. Um, Is anybody thinking about running for the hills? Yeah. Like, what have <laughs> I signed up to? <laughs> Sarah, sorry, Sarah, I came in above uh, across you. No, no, I I just jumped in. Um, we we get a copy of all of this, don't we? Oh, of course. The, the people's roles. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, I don't know, but I, my my background is an academic background. I, I was a uh, senior lecturer um diversity and inclusion lead until i had to retire um last year with long covid um but i have some experience of, of peer reviews in an academic context so um that's partly why why i put myself forward but i think just um getting together and being clear with each other about what each other's roles are that that will always um help particularly from my my point of view when i'm joining you all at different times. What you might find helpful, Sarah, is that on Thursday we're doing the training session um, and I think that's where we will establish quite clearly what people's roles are, how it all comes together, what people do on the day, how it works. The, the whole purpose of Thursday is to get you feeling very comfortable with what you need to do and how you're going to work as a team. So I think this is the get your head around the enormity of the whole programme and how it works and how it's been put together. By the time we get to Thursday, I'm hoping you'll feel very comfortable with the way that the programme individually is going to work, what you need to do, uh, and how you as a team are going to interact with each other. Yeah. So I think today's session is this kind of go through the process and the expectations of different roles and things like that. But in terms of how you might undertake some of that, Tim will go through that um, during the training. Tracy's just um, put on reassured we're having the training session. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is where I was going with my belt and braces this morning and my kind of like preparing you for um, a lot of information uh, going in because we're very aware of that. So and, and um, just to add to that, Karen, is that the slides and training will be available after the training session so that you'll have all the resources. Um, it, it, I, I always find it easier to circulate the slides afterwards, otherwise people read them before and don't come to the training session. So th that doesn't really help anybody. Um, so, so, so you get all the resources, and clearly you've got all our emails and whatever. So, you know, we don't want anybody to feel that you're left alone to make this up as you go along. This is a program, and Sarah's talked about the one she's done in um, academia. I've been running peer review programs for over twenty years. Um, I've got a lot of experience in how they work and where where it where people feel nervous about it and where feel, people feel comfortable. Uh, so we want all of you to walk out after Thursday and go. I know what I'm doing. I feel okay. And if not, I know who to ring. Um, and that's the important part. If you've got a phone and friend number, you, then you feel comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And we'll share these slides um, in advance of the training just for, for you to kind of get your head around the process so that if you have got any questions, then you can follow up and I'll be attending that training session as well. Um, so, you you know, you can kind of bring your questions then um, if you yeah, if you can't think of any questions right now. Um, so in terms of the guidance, so this is um, for preparing for each of the peer reviews. So as mentioned, we've got the training. So we've got bespoke training to kind of just develop confidence and just get you prepared for completing the peer review. So we've got bespoke trainings for each of the different pilots because we understand, you know, there's different service models, et cetera, and the way you might approach this might be quite different. Um, so we've got for pilot one, the training is this Thursday. Then we've got training for pilot two 
um, beginning of May and then um, pilots retraining will take place at the end of May. So please try and attend your bespoke training. But if you're not able to attend due to you know, availability issues and things like that, then you can attend another group. Um, and also the recording will be made available. But you know, it's really important that you do try and attend the training. But if you do decide to kind of attend another group, then just inform me um, and I can make arrangements for that. So I keep talking about this self-assessment form. Um, so in terms of the host team, so the service that's been reviewed, um, they will be asked to tell the story of the service in advance of undertaking um, a peer review um, visit. OK, this will kind of give insights on the things that are going well during the service, as well as the challenges and things like that. Um, this document should be kind of um, completed and shared with the reviewers in advance. So at least about two weeks in advance before the peer review actually takes place. Now we've got templates for this. We've got all the questions developed and things like that. And that's been developed with um, the decision making group as well as looking at the London model and and um, other available evidence. And we looked at the evidence that's been given by NHS England as well as um, the NICE guidance. Um, so as mentioned, you know, it would be really good if host teams complete this self-assessment form at least two weeks in advance, giving the review team to kind of time to reflect on the self-assessment form, um, really kind of get a feel for the service, etc. And then that will kind of prepare them for how they might approach the peer review. So, you know, thinking about the questions that they might want to ask during the peer review, etc. Because, you know, it might be covered in the self-assessment form and it doesn't really make sense um, duplicating that. Um, so for Stafford and Stoke, we've put the 1st of May as the deadline for completing the self-assessment form. Um, for Leicester, the 22nd of May and for Lincolnshire, the 12th of June. OK, so the self-assessment form will be on the NHS Futures website, which I'll give you access to later. Um, so it's all standardised um, and there's guidance around what to fill in. And, you know, if there's things within the self-assessment form that doesn't apply to your service, then, you know, it's um, that's fine, etc. But also, as as mentioned, it's testing some of these forms out as well to make sure um, it works. Um, so consider national guidance. You know, the guidance, national guidance is quite limited, but there is guidance around this, and we've used some of this guidance in developing this process. So there's an NHS guidance, there's also NICE guidance in terms of how you might want to manage long the long-term effects of, of COVID. Um, and during this, um, as I mentioned before, once host teams submit the self-assessment report, we ask review teams to cross-reference with the interview template um, that will be given to you. So as part of this um, process, we encourage you to kind of um, undertake some interviews with, 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 with patients as well as um, the service team. So cross reference with the interview templates and the topic guides. So we've given like a list of questions that you might want to ask as part of, of the interviews. So I'd ask that you kind of cross reference with the self assessment report that's been submitted to see, OK, what are the gaps? You know, and what is it I need more information on? OK, they've already kind of answered that question. So there's no there's not a need to kind of ask that question during the interview. So we'll we've kind of put all the questions there that you might want to ask, but then we've also left it to the review team to decide on what questions would be relevant. Um, um, then making make logistical arrangements. So, you know, as soon as possible, if we can get the host team lead and the review team facilitator to 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 meet and think about um, how best to approach this peer review. Um, you know, they might want to discuss whether it's best to undertake a face to face or virtual or hybrid way of of this peer review. Um, whilst also acknowledging that 
face to face is best practice, but if that's not possible, then that's fine. Um, and also it'll give the opportunity for both sides to kind of meet each other, build their relationships and go through the approach and things like that. Yes, Karen. Um, I think there's a bit of a delay in the slide catch up when you're um, um, so it literally just moved over into this one um, just now. So I just think there's, oh, I've, got a bit, I've got a bit of a delay, I think, and I wasn't sure if other people were suffering from the same delay. Oh, did Me you? Me too. Yeah. Yeah, same yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were talking and your slide hadn't moved on. Um, oh, and then OK. As soon as I put my hand up, it moved. So it may, moved. maybe I just created some magic. You did, Karen. As always, <laughs> so Karen. <laughs> but I'll give you some time to just kind of go through those two bullet points. OK, and then in terms of once that meeting's taken place, just confirm a plan with a follow up email um, to the host team so everybody knows exactly what the plan is, what the agreed approach is. You know, you might have timetables and, and things like that. And we've also got templates for timetables as well, um, you know, and any kind of relevant information after the call to kind of manage expectations for the peer review. So the review team know exactly what they're doing and also the host team know um, what they're doing and you've got like this agreed approach. Um, we've got a checklist as well. Um, so we've got a checklist in terms of what our reviewers expected to do as well as um, the host teams. So just go through that checklist to just make sure that all the aspects of the process have been met. If you're doing a face-to-face -face visit, then just check the COVID requirements and then also the expenses. So we've, we've kind of recommended a reciprocal process so as you'll see that like you'll be involved in different parts of the different pilots. So, you know, at one time you might be part of the review team and then another time your your service will be a host team, etc. So if um, so if reviewers kind of cover the costs for travel, if they end up doing a face to face visit and host teams kind of cover the costs of the visit, it will just kind of balance out, won't it? OK, in terms of the peer review visit now. OK, so we've done the, the things before, you know, the aspects that need to take place before the peer review. Now we're going on to the actual peer review. OK, so we've included lots of tasks and activities um, on the next slide, but we've also separated them out. Also acknowledging, you know, there's services that might be struggling with time. So we've got some recommendations as well as um, essentials. OK, so these are the essential things that you should be doing as part of this peer review programme, and these are the rec recommended tasks. So if you could do all the recommended things, that would be amazing. Um, but if not, we also acknowledge, you know, we don't want to overburden services. So in terms of the essentials, we've got the peer review team and host team kind of introduced, you know, having an introduction of that. Um, we've also included interviews and group interviews with two or more patients to understand their experience. And we think it was, this is really pertinent to the peer review um, and also interviews or group interview with two or more individuals from the clinical service team. Um, and also organising like a peer review debrief straight after the review. So amongst the different peer reviewers that have been um, part of the peer review process to kind of just get their experience of the review and kind of collect all of that experience and and things that and what are the key findings etc and then providing early feedback to the host team and ask them to kind of you know give them feedback on what they thought of the process as well so those are the essentials um, the recommended tasks are you know as mentioned before a presentation given by the host team OK, just kind of um, giving an overview of the service, et cetera, and it should last no more than 10 minutes. And this is something that you might want to undertake um, right at the beginning of the peer review to kind of give an introduction of the service, um, review of evidences, policies and things like that. Staff to rotors, training, those are a little bit more specific. Um, that's recommended as well. And if there's any kind of relevant meetings to attend, you know, if you want to observe some of that as part of the peer review, you might ask the host team whether there's any, you know, specific meetings that might be useful as part of the peer review programme. 
um, that's recommended as well. And if you're completing a face to visit, a face to face, then it'll be good to kind of have a tour of the service and just see how it works um, in practice. Um, in terms of consideration for reviewers, so we've mentioned semi-structured interviews for interview or group interviews with patients as well as clinical service team. OK, um, now, as mentioned before, we've got we've developed topic guides and like an interview guide for each of those two stakeholders. But please don't use it prescriptive prescriptively. You know, you don't need to ask all the all the prompts. It's more of, you know, cross referencing with the self assessment form to make sure, you know, it's um, you, you kind of ask the relevant questions that are needed. Um, and also for the patient interviews, please consider using Sarah as our patient rep. Um, we've also got some information sheets. So in advance of kind of asking somebody to take part in an interview, you might want to send the information guide, information sheet, which kind of outlines what they might be asked during the interview, etc. kind of just managing expectations. Um, anybody undertaking interviews should note take so um, and those notes will be submitted to the lead facilitator of the peer review team and then we've got a standard template for that that's on NHS future so you don't need to think about how to to kind of write up your notes etc and then we also encourage um, reviewers to kind of reflect on the process so once they've kind of completed all the tasks pertinent to pe the peer review will ask reviewers to kind of complete a reflections document. It's just like like a one sided document to kind of just um, think about. And it's like, you know, spend about 15 minutes just kind of reflecting on your experience and, you know, the conclusions that you've kind of drawn throughout the uh, throughout the process and think about the quality of the findings and any kind of gaps or anything that you might any kind of outstanding questions that might need to be asked. And then provide early feedback to host teams at the end of the review. Um, so. Yes, Tim. Sorry, I'm just checking and I meant to ask earlier on, Sarah, have you got access to NHS Futures? Which is the sort of generic website where we're putting stuff on that everybody can download it. No, I don't think okay. I no, nobody's so, got access to it yet, Tim. Um, okay. After this, after this, I'll be um, sending out um, invites to the NHS Futures. Platform. No, it's fine. I was just, I'm just conscious that Sarah is, is outside of the NHS Net email addresses. So oh, just, yes. Just, just, just want to make sure you can access it from outside, but it's not. It's not that straightforward. So, OK, just want to make sure I didn't want Sarah to be miss out, missing out early on. Thank you. Oh, thanks for t flagging that, Tim. I never thought of that, actually. Um, but yeah, we'll try and find a way around it, Sarah. Um, and then provide early feedback to the host teams at the end of the review. So it should last about 15 minutes, no more than that, to kind of just um, say, you know, overall, this is what the key findings are, et cetera. Um, and you know that could if it's a face to face that it will be at the end of the day but if it's um if you'd kind of undertake it as um if you do like a virtual um peer review then that might be a separate meeting that will need to be organized um so we've got templates and guides for all of these things um, and that's all going to be available on nhs futures for you okay and then for the host team um so just if it's a face to face, then it's it's probably it's probably useful to kind of just have that as the main event for the day. Um, if you are involving patients, um, then it might be useful to kind of just let them know who you know who these um, extra people are in the room, etc. Um, you might want to involve your senior management team, so you might want them to join the feedback session at the end of the peer review, etc. And just really you know view it as an as an opportunity for improvement you know um you know it's a supportive review think critical friend etc try and be as open as and as transparent as possible um and share all the good practice so i'm sure there's some really wonderful things that you're doing and you know this is the purpose of peer review where you're able to share that learning etc um and just just you know 
when the peer review is taking place, just treat it as business as usual, you know, um, just, you know, how, um, you know, it's natural to kind of be a little bit on edge, like somebody's coming to review your service, etc. But um, yeah, just try and be as normal as possible. OK, any questions up to that? Um, so we've gone through the actual peer review visit. Um, has anybody got any questions? No? Anyone feeling overwhelmed? I, some of the smiles, possibly a bit. Possibly. Possibly. It would, be, it would be wrong if you weren't at this stage. Exactly. Uh, Absolutely. You, you know, if you weren't thinking where I've let myself in for you. It, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, so all of that is perfectly normal. And, um, and our job is to support you through that process um and um hence the training with tim this week and the following training all the documents that uh zahira has produced uh ready to support you on this 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 um this process yep so yeah we've got a template for everything so hopefully that will save you some time um okay now go guidance on the post peer review visit so we've gone through like the bulk of the session. So we've got a post visit report. As mentioned, after the peer review, um, a post visit report will be written. Um, so um, that will be uh, written by the review team facilitator. Um, and again, we've got templates for that on the NHS futures. So it's all like a standardised um, template. So everybody will be filling in exactly the same sections, etc. OK, so this will highlight the main findings um, during the self-assessment, you know, after reviewing the self-assessment form, as well as the evidence presented, any observations that you've made um, and any kind of discussions that you've had with key stakeholders. And it will also include key considerations and opportunities for improvement. OK, it will be um, finalised in this way. So, um, as I mentioned, the review team facilitator will collect data from all the individuals part of the peer review team. Um, and then they will draft a version of the report that will be checked, that will be sent to their, their colleagues as well as the host team to just check for factual accuracy. And then that will be then sent to um, um, NHS England once it's been finalised. Um, and you can just upload it on your on the on the NHS Futures website and then NHS England will have access to that. Um, and then after this, that's when you can all rest. <laughs> um, and then we've got a regional summary. So NHS England will collect all of those peer review reports and create a standard summative report on the region on um, on the Midlands. Um, once that's been written, it will be shared with everybody part of the peer review process um, and, you know, you'll be given an opportunity to ask questions, etc. And then a learning event and will be organised as well, where you can kind of, it will support education, you'll be all be kind of be able to um, share your experience of being part of this peer review um, and any kind of common challenges that you're facing as a service, etc. And Comments from this this discussion will um, will develop actions for post COVID clinics and any aspects that need escalation to NHS England Midlands and ICBs. Um, you know that will happen as well. Um, okay, in terms of the data sharing platform, I mentioned NHS Futures a lot. So at the moment, you don't have access to NHS Futures, but after this meeting, you know, I've got all your email addresses, etc. So I will be sharing an invite to to the platform. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like. OK. So this is our platform, our little workspace. So we've got a discussion forum. So, you know, across the different pilots, 
pilot teams if you want to kind of discuss your experience, etc. And we, I really do kind of recommend that you do do that. Um, you've got, you know, a page to do that. We'll upload the guidance here. So we, as mentioned, we are also developing guidance documents, so all the slides, that's the summary of the guidance document. So if you need some more detail, you can always go back to the guidance document. Then we've got templates. So as I mentioned, the self-assessment form will be uploaded here. Interview documents, so that's like topic guides, reviewer interview reflections, and all of those kind of things, the information sheets, etc. Reflections, so um, as a peer review, peer review, if you've got any reflections, we've got a template for that. And then a final report template will be uploaded there as well. Then here we've got pilot one, pilot two and pilot three. So these are actually private folders. OK, so for pilot one, the reviews of pilot, the review team as part of pilot one will only ha have access to this folder. So it's a protected um, folder. So um, that's where you will upload all like, for example, your interviewer notes and your report on the service, etc. So these are um, obviously confidential. So no other pilot team will have access to that folder. OK, um, and the same will happen with pilot two and pilot three. Um, and within each of these pilots, I'll also set up um, a discussion forum. So if you as a as a review team, if you've got anything to discuss, etc., um, you can discuss it all on this platform. Um, so hopefully that should work. Um, I am going to. OK, so I think that's everything that I've got to say in terms of next steps. Should expect an invite to NHS Futures platform within the next few days. Um, and then also, as mentioned, we want it to be an iterative process. So once pilot one has been completed, we'd, we'd like to kind of arrange a focus group with those involved in pilot one um, and um, to kind of get that feedback on your experience of the process so that we can then feed that into pilot two and then pilot three as well. Um, attend the, the training that's been organised for your pilot. So if you haven't received the dates, it should all be in your calendars. Um, and also wanted to cons consent. I wanted to just get some consent to share your email addresses with other individuals within your pilot team. So you will see that there's different. Obviously, there's um, so as part of the review team, we've got like two services as part of the review team. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody is OK for me to, to kind of share the email addresses because then um, that's the only way you're going to be able to contact other members of the review team. Has anybody got any objections on that? No, that's fine. Um, so yeah, as one of I think one of the first things that that um, you might want to do is um, organize a meeting. So the review team need as well as the host team need to kind of just start discussing the approach that you might take um, for this peer review um, and then start host teams to kind of start on the self assessment form. Um, the templates on NHS futures and if you do it might you know the self-assessment form as mentioned there's three sections to the self-assessment form if you're having trouble filling it in etc then please do get in touch um, and we've got all the guidance on there on how to kind of complete the self-assessment form etc um, but if there's any questions along the way then please do feel free to kind of get in touch um, and lastly, enjoy the peer review process. You know, it's been it's been a real pleasure to kind of develop this process um, with clinical leads and service leads within the Midlands. Um, so, so yeah, um, I just hope you enjoy the process and it's a real learning opportunity for your service and and um, uh, and things like that. I'm going to move on. Has anybody got any questions? Can I just check if anybody's not going to be able to join Thursday's training? 
because we need to try and make sure that those people who don't manage to get to training get supported in some way. So is anybody I'm not here? going to be able to make that one, Tim. Who was that? Sorry. It's me, Trish. Right. Oh, OK, <laughs> Trish. OK, thank you. So if you're not, maybe we either we have a conversation outside of here or we will record it and send you the recording. That's fine. Um, sometimes the recording doesn't give you that interaction, but maybe you watch the recording and give me a call. I, I don't mind which, but we'll, but we'll sort it out. Okay. So thank you. Great. Well, um, a huge thank you, everybody, for um, staying with us, not leaving, um, keeping on. You know, it's an hour of listening. Uh, it's pretty full on, um, as well as a lot of information to share. Um, we'll see you on Thursday at the tra training and Trish will be in touch with the, the interview. Sorry, the um, recording and obviously the offer to get in touch with Tim. Uh, you have our contact details. You know where we are. Please, please don't sit and worry. Just get in touch. OK. And a huge thank you to everybody. Thank you very much and see you on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.